Thank you. Hello, everyone. So yes, I'm Pierre. I'm software engineer at Astar Network. And today, I will talk about calling uh, from Ink Smart Contract uh, frame palette, uh, the different options that are available, the trade-off between those options, and also the future possibilities. I've been working on this since uh, quite a long time, so I'm really excited to talk about it today here. So as an introduction, I think the main constraint uh, when you want to make contract to palette inter interaction is that contracts are immutable and the runtime is actually upgradable. So here, this is a diagram of the architecture of palette contracts. So you have on top all the language that uh, is used to, cr to write WASM smart contracts. So you have Ink, Solidity, and Ask for now that compile to WebAssembly bytecode. And all the purple C is actually on-chain storage. And those uh, blob, those was WebAssembly blobs, actually communicate with the runtime via Palette Contracts API in yellow. And what function does this API exposes? It's in uh, green. So you have like get storage, set storage to manage the storage. You have like color to get the color address. And like, uh, for example, you can terminate the contract or act actually transfer native token. So to resume, smart contracts are immutables. Uh, that means they can, uh, when they are deployed on chain, they can only interact with the runtime using palette contract host function. And they are also constrained in their environment, meaning that they can call each other or use palette contract API. But to extend their capabilities, they need to call other palettes. I think you all uh, heard about uh, upgradable contracts. Uh, so you you might be uh, thinking, why are contract immutables? It's because they're immutable by default. So the, if there is one contract that is immutable and deployed on chain, we should consider all contracts are immutable because we should uh, ensure its compatibility with our uh, environment or palettes. On the other hand, palettes are upgradable with a forkless, run, forkless runtime upgrade. So basically, you update the runtime. Palettes are module of this runtime. And inside this palette, you have a dispatchable, so API of this palette. And this call can actually be updated or be changed. Uh, a good example is, for example, uh, palette assets that is used by, I think, almost all parachain and also Polkadot. Uh, one of its calls was changed. It was destroy call. And it was updated and breaking down to three different dispatchable. So if you had in your smart contract a low interaction with this uh, destroy dispatchable from palette asset, you will have a problem there. So why do we even need ink uh, to palette interaction? Uh, so the most obvious one is to extend smart contract capabilities. For example, if ink contract can access uh, asset palette, then all liquidity that come from palette assets, meaning like, uh, for example, dot or all asset from asset app can be used in ink smart contract and in DeFi. Without this, it's not possible uh, for ink smart contract to bring liquidity to the WASM environment. Also, another example that we have in Astar XVM, so cross virtual machine. So in contract can call a Solidity smart contract on EVM. And for this, you also need to allow ink to palette interaction. And also the last one, the one that everybody is waiting for is XCM. This is also needed. Another benefit that we might not uh, think about it at first is uh, that it can expose really reliable logic. Because this logic, is coded by the runtime core team. It will be tested. Uh, it might be audited. So it's way more trusted to call business logic on the runtime side than on a smart contract side that is developed uh, by another team. Also, the runtime 
code that you call runs faster on the runtime than if you call it on a smart contract. So it will increase sca scalability and also decrease the transaction fees that user will pay. So right now, there is two ways to actually do ink uh, to palette interaction that is integrated into palette contracts. The first one is chain extension, where you extend palette contracts uh, API with new function. And the second one is call runtime. That is just it's one function, one host function, that takes a call as argument and will dispatch it in the runtime. So let's have a look at both of them. So the first one, chain extension. So chain extension has two implementation. One implementation, maybe 90% of it will be in the runtime. And also, there is an implementation in Ink. Let's have a look at it. So this is in Ink. So first, you need to define the chain extension tray on top, and then add your function. So here, uh, we use like a chain extension example, and it only exposes one function, which is fetch random. And then you need to add an error for it and implement uh, from statue code. And then you add it to your custom environment. The good thing is what you see on the left. So the first thing can actually uh, be implemented by the runtime team in a library crate and be just imported in your contract. So in your contract, it will look like the second picture uh, where you, you import it. Then you use uh, the custom environment with the ink attribute macro. And you can see in the update message that uh, you use it just by using self.env.extension and then the name of uh, the chain extension you want to call. So in the runtime, here it's a really basic example. Uh, you just create uh, your type, and then you need to implement chain extension trait for it. That only has uh, one method uh, call. And then you implement in this method uh, all your logic based on the function ID. So let's review uh, chain extension. What are the pros and cons? The good thing is that uh, the error handling is uh, properly implemented. So for example, if you use a palette asset chain extension and you get like not enough fund in palette asset, then it can bubble up in your contract and be decoded. Uh, also, it can implement weight, so you can use custom weight, and you can make state change and also query runtime. So pretty full-fledged implementation. Also, a good thing is that it acts as a middleman between contracts and palettes. So it's possible to add logic in between. So before calling a palette, you can add logic uh, before. Also, if you want to add logic that is not available in a palette, you can just implement it directly in chain extension. This is what, for example, uh, Fala Network has been done for uh, signature verification. And also, if somehow the the dispatchable call structure in your palette has been changed, for example, the case in palette asset, maybe as it acts as a middleman, you can make change to ensure compatibility of contract that use your chain extension. On the con side, uh, it should really handle uh, security and also benchmarking. And it's really, uh, it's really long to implement. You also need to add a unit test for it. So it's a lot of work, a lot of maintenance. And for the case where you have, like, for example, a palette asset and you want to create palette asset chain extension, it will be a lot of work for no added benefit because you just want ink to call directly uh, the dispatchable from palette asset. Also, it needs long-term vision uh, because if you integrate chain extension in your runtime, you need to ensure that on parity side, the palette contracts team will maintain it in the long run, so you will not have to maintain a fork version of palette contracts. So let's see the second way to do it. It's called call runtime. So what is it? It's a really simple host function that just takes one argument and this argument is a call. It's a runtime call. So there is no new code that is added to the runtime. 
and it does not use custom environment in ink, so it's pretty trivial. And in the runtime, you have like a whitelist uh, that we call call filter, where you can whitelist a call that is accessible from call runtime. So in runtime, the only uh, piece of code that you will have to add is this one, is a call filter. So here you can see that I only allowed uh, transfer and transfer approved from Paletta set. And this is the only thing you need to add in your runtime. In ink, as uh, this host function takes a call argument, it will be scale encoded in ink and decoded in the runtime. So you should import every type uh, in your contract to create exactly uh, the same uh, call with the same type. And you can see in the second image, use call runtime. This is just like self.environment.callRuntime, where, where you pass the call and its argument. And that's all. So the good thing about this is that uh, if you want just your contract to call, uh, to call palettes, for example, in the case of palette asset, it will just call um, like transfer and transfer approve without any added logic. It's really easy because there is no code added to the runtime, meaning no edit, uh, no security issue, and no benchmarking to handle. Also, if you want to add, for example, custom logic only accessible from smart contracts, for example, in Astar, we, did, uh, we implemented uh, for our testnet uh, XCM using call runtime. You just create a palette that we call a companion palette, where you integrate all the call logic that will be accessible to the contract, and then you add it to the call filter. <laughs> the cons about it is that uh, the error handling is not uh, properly managed in call runtime, meaning that it will only uh, send one error. So if you got like one error in a palette, then it will not bubble up to, to the contract. And also con query the on-chain storage, not possible. So you can transfer tokens using, for example, palette asset, but you cannot call balance of a contract because by default, uh, dispatchable of palette, by design, they return nothing. So there is also one other uh, issue with that, is that, as we have seen, palettes are upgradable. So if the call that you allow in call filter is actually uh, upgraded, uh, meaning that either the call interface or inside in its signed logic, then it will break the contract that use it it will panic. So uh, you will have only one solution, is actually to fork and maintain a forked uh, version of this palette. Because the compatibility of your contract is uh, your really hard constraint. And it will be really costly and really a hurdle. So one solution that uh, priority have think about it is to update this host function call runtime that will take a transaction version. So that if on the palette side, the dispatchable get updated, you will update the version, and then it will send back an error, and it will uh, basically uh, have a fail safe. But uh, we are talking recently about a third way to doing it, using XCM to call internal palettes. Um, so this way, I, I XCVM will act as a middleman, a bit like chain extension. Also, XCM is already versioned, so it's really nice. But maybe for some innovative case, uh, XCVM will need to be tweaked. And it's also possible to maybe extend uh, XCM standard for it. So in conclusion, what does it mean for a parachain point of view? When you choose a way to make contract to palette interaction, it should be future proof, meaning that you need to be sure that it will maintain on parity side, palette contract side, and also that it's easily maintained on your side. Also, your hard constraint is that you should really um, ensure compatibility of all already deployed smart contracts, 
because once you allow it, you should, uh, you should maintain its compatibility. Also, you need a full-fledged implementation, meaning what smart contracts need is to call dispatchable, so stage change uh, dispatchable. It should query the storage and also have a grid uh, error handling. Um, <coughs> and you should also consider that once you implement it, so if you implement call runtime or a chain extension, then it should be maintained. So it's uh, this you need to consider if you want to implement it what is already existing, or if you want to wait for uh, the killer use case that maybe XCM, uh, XCM used to call palette uh, will be deployed. That's all. Thank you. I don't have thank you slide. OK. Um, does anyone have any questions for Pierre? Hey, um, so it feels like they they all feel far from op optimal, all of those three options, because it would be great to have an immutable contract that just stays doing what it does forever Yeah. without yeah. maintenance. Yeah, so without maintenance, I don't think it's possible. Uh, but basically, if I have to, to summarize call runtime, it's... Uh, the cheaper way to implement because there is no new code to add, but it's only to call dispatchable. So if you want to query something, then you cannot use that. Uh, chain extension, we have considered it uh, a lot, uh, but it's a lot of maintenance, and uh, we had told Prisparity, and it, they were not sure if they will continue to maintain it or not. So for us, it's really hard to make the move because once we, we make the move, we know that it's not possible to, to come back. But from my opinion, chain extension have everything that is needed to, to do it. But then they should have a consensus between uh, every part chain and uh, pilot contracts team. And the XCM future would also involve maintenance, right? Um, but the maintenance, I guess, will be done by the substrate team. No, but this, I think, uh, as it will just basically use execute, so you will you just pass the uh, XCM to it, as uh, as in a palette XCM execute. So the maintenance will have to be done in the XCVM part of your part chain. So if uh, there is something that change on the palette side you need to have a way in XCVM to tweak it. So the maintenance part is on the parachain part in the XC, uh, XCVM palette. Config. OK. Any other questions by any chance? OK. Thank you very much.